A lot of amazing things happened in July this year. The Olympics kicked off, and Team USA lost a basketball game for the first time since 2004. But other more interesting and certainly less distressing things happened. For example, two billionaires visited space in a week. Richard Branson of Virgin Atlantic first went, and then eight days or so later, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world if you don't count a certain bear-riding president, visited space as well. And unlike Richard Branson, Bezos doesn't just have a goal of visiting space. He has an entire vision for space, humanity's role in it, and has the willpower to push for it. Welcome to Super Freaky Science, and today we'll be dissecting Jeff Bezos' vision for the future and we'll be checking our place in it, or even if we'll have a place in it, because right now he has plans a lot like science fiction. But we guess if anyone told us 20 years ago that private citizens would own reusable rockets that would make going to space a lot cheaper than normal, we would have called that science fiction too. So maybe Bezos is just way ahead of the curve. Anyway, let's get into it. Every age-defying movement starts with a simple but grand plan. With Facebook, it was the idea that you could connect with other students on campus without actually meeting them. For Amazon, it was the idea of buying books online. And for Jeff Bezos, his ventures into space are fueled by the idea that he could use the resources of space to save Earth. Bezos outlined this radical idea at an event in 2019. According to the billionaire, instead of using his money to end world hunger, as so many insist that he should, he would use his excess wealth to fund Blue Origins, his space company. Now, Blue Origins will not be building rockets for the rocket's sake. Instead, the company is all part of Bezos' bigger plan of making humanity a spacefaring species. The first step, of course, to manifesting that future is cracking space travel and making it cheap. After all, space travel will not be a very interesting venture for people if they have to sell a kidney or two to make the trip. That's why Bezos said Blue Origin would be focused on creating a sustainable way for not only nations, but private citizens to go to space. However, cracking space travel for ordinary people is just one tiny rung on the ladder to achieving Jeff's big dream. First off, great name, Jeff. If we had a space company called Blue Origin, we would also name our huge lunar lander the Blue Moon. Is there even a better name than that? No, not really, and that's a science fact. At that 2019 function, Bezos also unveiled the plans for the Blue Origin, a huge lunar lander capable of delivering up to 3.6 tons of cargo and scientific equipment to the lunar surface. Having the capacity to deliver so much cargo to the moon would certainly accelerate our understanding of space, and would help along with any attempt to make the moon habitable for human stay. According to Bezos, the Blue Moon doesn't have to be a lander for cargo and experiments alone, as the vehicle can also be expanded for human transportation. The Blue Moon won't only be extraordinary because of the cargo it can deliver to the Moon's surface, it would also be extraordinary because of the engine that powers it. Blue Origin has been working on a brand new engine called the BE-7 that has 10,000 pounds of thrust. This is the engine that would power the Blue Moon through its descent to the ground. The important thing about the Blue Moon, of course, is that it's not a dream in isolation. NASA may not be thinking of transporting humans to the Moon permanently or making humanity a spacefaring species, but they are also thinking of returning to the Moon, and even building a base there. NASA's dream for this mission is a multi-layered mission that would have one vehicle for human descent and one vehicle for cargo descent. The Blue Moon, if it gets completed on time, would be the perfect cargo lander. Now, before we continue, I've got an interesting wager for you. I'm going to tell you a super freaky fact, and if that fact blows your mind away, you would have to like and subscribe to the channel. No questions asked. Deal? Great. The Moon has quakes too. They're not called earthquakes, but moonquakes. They are caused by gravitational influences of the Earth. 
Unlike quakes on Earth that only last for a few minutes at most, moonquakes can last for up to half an hour. They are much weaker than earthquakes, though. If you didn't know that, you know the rules, and so do I. It's time to smash the like and subscribe buttons. Through all this, we've not said a thing about where humans will stay when they eventually move to the moon permanently, or when they leave Earth for the skies. Despite the inspiring idea of reaching towards the skies to grab the stars, there are still significant issues that stand between man and colonizing the moon and space. The gravity on the moon, for example, isn't as strong as Earth's. The atmosphere is ridiculously weak, and the oxygen… well, there is no oxygen to speak of. And if there's one thing about humans, it's that we generally find it very difficult to live without oxygen. We haven't yet cracked living on places like the Sahara, which just lacks water and fertile ground. So how are we going to live on the moon? Well, Bezos has a radical plan to remedy this. According to him, humans use a terrible amount of energy, and in a couple of centuries, we may have to cover the entire Earth with solar farms to meet our energy requirements. If that happens, we will have to be forced to leave Earth, or be faced with a terrible fate. The answer, according to Bezos, isn't to go to the moon, but to build these huge cylinders in space. These cylinders are called O'Neill cylinders, and are free-floating colonies that would have ample access to solar power. Does Bezos provide the mechanics for building these cylinders? Of course not. In fact, he has admitted that we don't yet have the tech. However, we could in the future, and the only way to guarantee that is to create a culture where we are forced to look at the stars as a solution. He argues that once spacefaring becomes a regular thing for humanity, we'll slowly develop the tech to develop these mini-colonies floating in the middle of space. If this sounds a lot like science fiction to you, don't worry, you aren't alone. We also think so too. Really, cylinders in space. Hmm. However, even though this idea might sound crazy, let's just say we wouldn't be too surprised if it actually happens. After all, it's the human race we're talking about. We've been against worse odds, and we've done better. That's it for today, guys. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Goodbye, and remember to stay super. Forget about the science part, leave that to us. We'll do the freaky science for you.